Whether you are a student struggling through exam chaos or working full time in a job where you're juggling lots of projects, a planner can really help you stay organized. And today I'm gonna to show some planner spreads that target those needs. A big thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. I actually used my Cricut Explorer Air 2 to design some fun touches for these spreads and I'll be showing you the behind the scenes process of that in a little bit. Make sure you're subscribed, hit that bell if you haven't already and let's get into the planning. Although I'm no longer living the student life anymore, the absolute dread of having a big final to study for still feels fresh. But one thing I remember about that season for me was how important it was to have a plan of attack for big study events. These days, my version of studying for exams is prepping for work meetings. Although you're not technically graded on them in the same way you are for exams, there is some sort of impression or evaluation being made. So I always like to ensure I'm well versed on what's about to be discussed. And I feel like this spread could easily be adapted to fit those needs. The first rectangle on the left page is where you can detail exactly what you'll be studying on the days leading up to exam or a meeting day. In university, I rarely ever studied more than a week out from a test because my brain a could not retain information on a long-term basis and B was preoccupied with probably other deadlines that were happening before that test date. On the right page, there's a rectangle to create a general quote unquote to study checklist of the main topics that need to be tackled and a rectangle below that where as studying is occurring, topics that need extra attention or review can be listed. If you were doing this for preparation for a meeting or presentation, you could swap out the study checklist and instead record things like outline presentation, rehearse introduction, print supporting documents, etc, etc. To create this next spread, a quarter slash semester overview, I started off by pasting in some craft paper circles that I cut out using my Cricut Explore Air 2 machine. You guys are more than aware of how much I love using craft paper in my journal spreads, so I really had fun designing some simple decor accents that you're gonna see me use in all of the spreads today. To design the craft paper elements, all I had to do was open Cricut Design Space and start a new project. From there, I went to the Shapes tab and started dragging in some circles. It's really easy to enlarge and shrink any shape you want and I love the fact that the measurements are listed on the screen so I know exactly how much space a cutout will take up before I even cut it out. Whenever I do this process I just try and cut out as many shapes as possible. So I also added in rectangles both skinny and larger ones and I wrote out the word project in a bold font to act as a header for the next spread. After that I was ready to get cutting and sent the project to my Cricut Explorer Explore Air 2. One of the things I really appreciate about the Explore Air 2 is how many types of projects I can create with it. It's able to cut 100 materials, including vinyl, paper, cardstock, felt, leather, and more. And it's also able to draw and score materials. A couple months ago, you even saw me use my Cricut machines to customize my own sweatshirts. I also decided to cut out some stationary sticker designs I had drawn out on my tablet. To cut these out, I simply uploaded the PNG to Cricut Design Space duplicated it so I could get a whole sheet of stickers and sent the design to my printer where it was printed off onto some sticker paper and then I used my Explore Air 2 to cut them out. Both the machine itself and Cricut Design Space are really easy to use. The Cricut Design Space walks you through each step so you really can have confidence that your projects will turn out as well as they do in your head. I ended up putting the stickers all around at the top of the page to create stationary confetti and I'm absolutely in love with this look. It's very on brand for the theme of student work spreads and was a lot less time consuming than drawing and coloring in each stationary element with a pen and marker. The intention behind this spread is really to highlight all your due dates and deadlines in one place. Each month has its own column divided up into four rows to represent week one, two, three, and four. And then on the side, I created a key or a legend indicating what each color represents. If you're a student that could look like a color per course, or if you have a full-time job that could look like a color per work project. The craft paper stickers and layout of the spread just came together so impeccably. My eyeballs feel 
feel so satisfied when I look at this one. I love it so much. So if you want to take your journaling game to a whole new level and or just have fun doing crafting projects for your home or for gifts, then I highly recommend giving the Explore Air 2 a try. I will have it linked for you all in the description box below, as well as links to my project files in case you want to use them in your own planner. For the next spread, I created a project outline and started off by pasting in the craft paper project header that I cut out earlier with space beside the header to record the title and due date for the project. On the left page, I used the rest of the space to create a big four column table. This table is where the serious project planning takes place. Like the study planner, each row that has a task has to also be given a deadline. I personally find creating plans with deadlines help me in staying accountable so I don't have those panic sessions the day before something is due. There's also a column on the far left to mark when you complete a deadline and the column on the right page is a spot to record how many hours you spent on that task, which can be great information to keep track of and give to your manager and or just for your own personal understanding of how long tasks take you so you know how to even better manage your time in the future. On the right page is a spot to record which class the project is for, the weight of the assignment, i.e. what percentage of your final grade it is, and who your team members are. I kept the rest of the page blank to provide room for any notes that need to be jotted down about the project as you work on it. Having a note section is rarely ever something I regret having because there is inevitably at some point an important piece of information that pops up. I brought back the stickers from the quarterly overview spread to this updated student budget layout. Back to school season can often come along with extra expenses, so the left side of the budget spread is meant to focus on budgeting for those purchases associated with being back in class or back at the workplace. Textbooks, stationery, office supplies, tech, backpacks, clothing, dorm goods, etc, etc. Although this time of the year definitely comes with extra spending, there's also thankfully lots of deals going on too. So having a budget can really help motivate you to look for those cost saving opportunities. The right page is a spot to create a budget for the more weekly purchases, things like food, bills, transport, subscriptions, fashion, beauty, books, home, takeout, health, etc. Whether you formally track your spending or not, sitting down to create even a rough budget can help equip you with more knowledge when you are at the store debating the pros and cons of making a purchase. Especially if you're a student just starting to take more control over your finances, I find a budget can be really helpful in strengthening your relationship with money. Student and work life both come along with a lot of to-do items, so it only felt appropriate to make a weekly spread that allows you to be specific not only about what tasks you're doing, but also when you're planning on doing them. I kept this weekly spread focused on the work week, so the Monday to Friday dates, with each day getting its own column. On the far left page, I used a black pen to write out timestamps from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. So there's plenty of space to not only schedule in work-related tasks, but also self-care ones because those are just as important, if not more important, when you're juggling a lot of balls in the air. I also made a point of blocking off breakfast, lunch, and dinner in my schedule because I don't know about you guys, but when I'm in a really busy season, it can sometimes be easy to skip a meal simply because you're just preoccupied with the task on hand. Lunch for me is always the meal that I have to be so much more intentional about. So I wanted to ensure it has a very present spot in my schedule. And then the rest of the slots can be filled in with work sessions, lectures, meetings, etc. In the spirit of self-care, there was also enough space on the right of the page to add in some habit trackers. The classic habit trackers for me are hydration, meditation, workouts, and expressing gratitude. And there's also a section to log how many hours of sleep I get each night because quality sleep is so important to being able to function. Which 
spread in this setup was your favorite. I personally cannot get over that quarter overview spread. I think it's my favorite spread that I've put together in quite some time. Thank you again to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to click the link in the description box below so you can check out the Explore Air 2 for yourself. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye!